All right, let's get this series kicked off. Welcome to our 2020 Premium Buying Guide. This is a updated version of a video series that we did in the past that a lot of people have requested us to revisit. So we're gonna do our best to cover all vehicles that you can buy on Steam, PlayStation, Xbox, War Thunder Store, and then Golden Eagles. I know there's a bunch of different ways to get vehicles like rolling uh, loot boxes in game, the trade store, I think you can go to the corner and wave some guy down named Hector and try to buy something from him. There's literally like 60 different ways to get War Thunder vehicles now compared to when we originally did the first video. So we're going to try and cover the legit official sources of how to get vehicles that don't require you to work a War Thunder stock market or gamble on loot boxes. It's going to be focused purely on the golden eagle vehicles and the pack vehicles we're not going to worry about former event vehicles or any event vehicles from trophies the reason why we're doing this video is if you're going to spend money on this game we're going to try and help you get the most out of your dollar we're not telling you to spend money we just want you to get the most out of your out of your hard-earned cash and if you are going to spend money in this game we have a quick favor of you to ask below you'll see a worth under affiliate link and if you click on that you can save three percent on your next worth under purchase 3% is not a big deal, but 3% also goes back to the channel, and 3% uh, adds up pretty quickly. If you can make the time and just remember to do that for us, it'd be greatly appreciated. You also get a fancy boat time decal, and the backstory to that decal is it was inspired by me running around trying to kill fresh spawns in DayZ with Fire Axe. that's what heroes do. <laughs> Nothing says a good time like killing somebody while they're screaming for forgiveness with a Fire Axe. Friendly? Let's get started with our first vehicle, the M2A4 First Armor Division. For a whopping 250 golden eagles. It's a lot of eagles. It's a big purchase, but we gotta start somewhere. So this guy comes with a 37mm cannon. He's pretty quick, pretty nimble. Comes with like 5 30 cal machine guns. It's uh, I generally believe that it is a reward if you play US Ground Forces first if you're a new player. It is, yeah. It is considered one of the better vehicles to start off with because it's maneuverable and fast. But it does have a couple drawbacks. Mostly... You can knock out the crew if you drive into a wall fast enough. So if you're not good at driving, don't go very fast. Do you learn that from experience, Bear? Yeah, a little bit. Well, the Locusts like to break the transmission the same way. It doesn't have very good steering if you're not above second gear. Not too bad to deal with, but overall it does have a good gun. It's agile, it has decent armor, um, and it does have a roof-mounted 30 tile, which is useful against airplanes. So in our previous video, we used this very complex squirrel ranking system that I thought was a good yeah, idea. The chipmunks didn't like it. Yeah, the chipmunk union kind of sued us for using the squirrels and didn't contact the chipmunks for a contract evaluation. So essentially, we're going to say, buy this now, wait for a sale, or don't buy. Yeah. We're going to make it easy. Keep it simple. So for this vehicle, for 250 Golden Eagles, if you're just getting started... I would say buy. It's not a bad buy. The good news is you can use it for a vast majority of the tier 1 grind. And since it is a tier 1 premium, it will help grind through little bits of tier 2 if you want to stay in the first tier for a bit and just get the hang of things. It'll help you get started into tier 2 research with the things like the Lee and the uh, Howitzer Sherman. So up next we have the M3A1 USMC which is available in what's called a starter pack. And this gets a little bit different because on Steam, War Thunder, and PlayStation 4, it's 499, and it will come with a P36A, 120,000 silver lines, and seven days of premium. If you're on Xbox, you get 500 Golden Eagles, and Thatch's Buffalo instead of the P36A. But they all cost 499. So you just get a little variation of what you get. This year, Gaijin put out the starter packs for the nations. It is a great way to get a feel for how the starting tree, the starting portion of each tree will feel. You will be able to get a hang of the tier one and two play styles. The US starter pack with the M3A1, it gives you a very capable machine in the tier one and it does help with the tier two grinding. You've got a machine that has the ability to do fast and maneuverable attacks, which is really helpful against things like Panzer Threes, B1 Bizzes, and Matildas, which you can kind of use to circle strafe around them if you get close. The gun does have the ability to penetrate most of those heavies at that tier. Yeah, the 3 7 millimeter gun's definitely the highlight of, of the Stuart. You have a very maneuverable machine with decent enough armor that you might be able to bounce some shells from far away, like the German 20 mils, 
but it's not enough at close range to rely on. But you do have the maneuverability and the firepower to deal with what you need to deal with. I would describe the Stuart's front armor as trolley. It doesn't mean it's always going to stop something, but it will do some weird stuff from time to time. They'll save your life. You don't you don't rely on it, but it can work when it needs to. It'll surprise you. I personally feel that if you're just starting the game, and you're interested in grinding US Tech Tree, that for four ninety nine, the starter pack is probably a pretty good buy for you. Yeah, the starter pack, which will get you the airplane, the tank, seven days of premium, as well as a little bit of silver lines. So as you progress through a tree, you can kind of buy stuff as you go without having to worry about grinding the lines to progress. Or if you want to save them and use them to expert a crew to make it a little bit better as you grind, you can do that as well. So right now on the Xbox store, there is a M5A1 exclusive for $20 that includes the Thatcher's Buffalo, 2,000 Golden Eagles, 120,000 Silver Lions, and 15 days of premium. Bear may have a bit of favoritism towards this vehicle because I believe that this is the Canadian skinned Stuart. This is the Canadian skinned Stuart, which means you should get it. The starter pack is more because you do get that 2,000 Golden Eagles as well as seven or oh, as well as eight extra days of premium time. You do get this as a rank two premium which is the major difference between this and the other beginner or starter pack. At rank two, though, you do get the advantage of better research towards tier three. So if you want something a little bit higher up that can grind a little bit better for your further progression down the tree, the bundle with the eagles and then the premium time extension, as well as the fact it's a rank two makes it a very good buy for anyone of the Xbox who enjoys the American low tiers. Even though this may be a great purchase for a new player on Xbox, I'm gonna personally say wait on this purchase for one simple reason. $20 is quite a bit of money, and I don't believe you get a lot out of this purchase for long-term play. I personally bought the M5A1 as a collector vehicle, and I've used it maybe twice. There's a lot of other low tier vehicles I enjoy playing in the US Tech Tree, and it just doesn't get much attention. I would personally take the $20, use it to buy Golden Eagles, and get a really nice rank 3 vehicle. Especially for um, if you're looking for something to grind America with, for the Golden Eagles you can get for the $20, $25, you do have the options of the T20, M18, and the Cobra King. So there are a lot better vehicles in terms of long term use as well as being able to grind further into the tree with very strong vehicles. It's not its not that it's a bad deal for a new player, but as he said, if you're further along the tree, it's better bang for your buck to get something further down. The next vehicle on our list is the Grant, which is the British version of the M3 Lee. So the primary difference between the Grant and the Lee is that the Grant has a British turret with a radio in the back of it. The Grant is for sale for 1,000 Golden Eagles. It's a battle rating of 2.7. It's armed with a 37mm top turret and a 75mm cannon mounted to the side. The US Tech Tree does have the M3 Lee as a non-premium at 2.7 as well. The M3 Lee and by fact that it's a variant of it, the Grant, both have the same thing where the 75mm is better off being used as your close range weapon due to the velocity of it and you can use your top turret and the fact that it's a fully rotatable one to cover your flanks and as well do the long range engagement. Close range wise, what you wanna do with that 75 mil is if you can, hide everything except for that side mounted gun. The M3 Lee and the Grant are both relatively strong vehicles at their BR. They do have the ability to one shot a lot of things with that 75 mil. They're okay vehicles. This is probably one that I would say wait for a sale simply because there's a Tetri version that has minimal differences that you can get for free. Yeah, I personally can't warrant spending a thousand golden eagles. So I would personally say wait, wait for a sell. If this guy goes 50% off, you can get it for 500 golden eagles. Absolutely. Uh, at 2.7 in the tree with the Howitzer Sherman and then the Tetri Lee, it is a bit of a hard sell for a thousand eagles. But if you enjoy the Tetri Lee and you want to pick it up to help grind further down in the tree, by all means, but for the average player who doesn't use the Lee a lot, it's better just to hold off on it or to wait for a sale. So up next, we have our second Canadian vehicle, the M4A5 Ram 2. 
And a fun little tidbit for you, this is slightly based off the M3 Lee we just talked about. The Canadians used some of the M3 Lee chassis to create this monstrosity. I mean, beautiful piece of Canadian no, engineering. I'll give you that. It is, it is an abomination, but it's a good one. So the M4A5 has a 57mm uh, British 6-pounder gun and has three American 30 cal machine guns. American. Compared to the Grant, the Ram has a better armor profile a more capable main cannon as well as better all-around capabilities so for 150 golden needles more the better bang for your buck is to get the ram i would also recommend picking this guy up just due to the fact that it is kind of a rare variant of a canadian tank that you don't see very often it's, it's definitely worth the 150 dollar increase compared to a grant up next we have the t14 Sherman in disguise. To give you a little back information on this guy, this is a Sherman that was part of an American-British program to up armor a medium tank into kind of a heavy tank setup. The British used the Cromwell and we got the Excelsior out of this program and the Americans used the Sherman and got the T-14 out of this program. So that's why it looks weird is because it is weird. Chunky Sherman. It is Chunky Sherman. In game you can buy this for 1600 Golden Eagles but wait there's more. On Xbox, there is a pack right now for $44.99 that comes with the BTD, the PT556, 1,000 Golden Eagles, 7 days of premium, 120,000 silver lines, and a title. And for $45, that's a, that's a pretty good pack, I think. But let's get back to talking about the T14. It's got a very nice 50 caliber machine gun on top, which is a nice feature about most American tanks. You have the 30 cal and the coax, and then you have the 75 millimeter main gun. This guy is all about the armor though, and at 4.3 battery rating, it can hold up pretty well for itself. That front plate is slanted back at about 60, 65 degrees, I believe, and a normal Tech Tree Sherman is about 40 to 45 degrees. So you're looking at about a 20 degree difference. Which doesn't sound like much compared uh, with the thickness of them at 50 mil versus about 60 mil, but sloping does so much to help. <laughs> The T-14 is the first heavy tank you'll see in the American Tetri. It's a great introduction to how to play later vehicles like the Jumbo, but it's also a full BR lower than the Jumbo, so you do have the advantage of what you face is a lot more forgiving in terms of what the enemy's main guns can pen and what they can't, so you can take a lot of hits at 4.3 with this armor. One nice feature that the T-14 does have is the ability to fire the T-45 APCR shell which if you do get up tiered and face tigers you can reliably penetrate them with ease with that shell so you're not going to be stuck trying to flank them in a heavy tank so for 1600 golden eagles i personally say that this guy is a pretty good buy for 1600 golden eagles the t14 is a good buy at full price and with the upcoming sale it's going to be worth picking it up on sale if you're looking for a tank that will break your sound card and also your bank tank break your bank that's, that's fun to say. May I interest you in the Sherman Calliope? For a down payment of 9,740 Golden Eagles, you can take this baby home today. But wait, there's more. You get the 75 millimeter main gun, you get a 30 caliber coax machine gun, and then you get more rockets than you know what to do with. One thing I can say real quickly about the battery rating is it looks like it's gonna be reduced from 4.3 to 4.0 in an upcoming patch. So as much as I like this thing from a niche cool factor, I can't tell anybody to buy this thing for that price tag. You can't really tell people to buy it for nearly 10,000 golden needles when you could pick up the rank five and buy the numbers even if there was one, a rank six premium. Even if this thing's 50% off in a sale. It's still a tough, it's still It's tough still thing. a lot of money. So even at 50% off, this guy will still cost about 5,000 golden eagles. Which is just absurd because if you're buying rank 3, you can buy literally 3 or 4 rank 2s or 3s for this price tag. Unless you really, really want it, and then if you really want it, wait for a sale, but still, it's not worth, not worth the price tag. Up next, we have the Cobra King, which is a premium version of the M4A3E2 Jumbo. That's a mouthful. This is the quintessential heavy tank that you'll find in rank 3. I don't know why I said quintessential. Five dollar words. The main difference between this and a normal Sherman is the additional armor that's been attached to the front of the hole. 
It still has your 50 caliber machine gun top and the 30 caliber coax that works in game. And you have a 75 millimeter cannon on this guy. The additional armor on the front hull means that unlike other Shermans, you don't have to worry too much about your vulnerability in a sustained engagement. Compared to the other heavies in game of Russia and Britain, you have far better mobility than the KV-1 and the Churchill. And you can also, it's a little bit more reliable on taking hits than either of those due to the fact that the armor is either sloped or rounded in the case of the turret. Much like the T-14, you do have access to the APCR shell. So if needed, you do have the ability at long range to take care of anything that you might see in an up tier or at least stand a chance. So for 2,980 Golden Eagles, it's just a goodbye bear. For 2,980 at its current BR, it's not a bad buy, but given the BR increase since we've last talked about it, it's one I am partially leaning towards wait for sale on. I would have said that until the volumetric shell patch. It is still a good buy either way, but it is something just to be wary of due to the fact it is at a higher BR than we previously touched on. But yeah, this is usually a tank I recommend to new players because it is very it is very straightforward, very easy to play, very good tank to learn the fundamentals of the game in. It, it's forgiving, as guess the word I'll say. It's forgiving. When you get shot in the face, it's forgiving. Up next, we have the M18 Black Cat. And the primary difference you'll notice between this M18 and the Tech Tree M18 is that this guy had his muzzle breech removed. That's about it. And some fancy decals. Oh, and the trash cover is removed. It's like Porsche. The more things are removed, the more expensive the car is. This also has the, you know, the premium bonuses as well, so I shouldn't compare it exactly like the M18 and the Tech Tree because you get the fancy RP and economic boosters with it as well. To describe the M18 to a new player, it's kind of like a go-kart with a 76mm cannon on top of it. It has no armor. It's very maneuverable, very high in the agility stats, but if you take a hit, you're probably going to die. So for 2,980 Golden Eagles, the exact same cost as the Jumbo, I think it's a good buy. It just depends on your playstyle. If you want the more brawling, heavy tank push right down the middle, go with the Jumbo. If you like to snipe, run, flank, and all that madness, the M18 would be the better buy for you. Yeah, the M18 is a very playstyle-oriented tank, as you mentioned. So if you're someone who is newer to the game or enjoys medium and heavy tank playstyle more, the Cobra King is the better option for the same price. I'll give it a buy too. It's it's a, it's a strong vehicle. Yeah, you won't go. You won't regret this. You'll have some fun. And to do some sweet flips if you hit bomb craters hard enough. I don't think we can rate boots of hazards into the equation. Up next, we have the T20 at the same battle rating as the M18 and the same cost. So 5.7 and 2,980 Golden Eagles. This is one of my favorite tanks in the game. It's uh, very short and squatty. has a very nice 76mm cannon. I personally have a lot of fun when I play this guy. If you're more of a brawling slash in-your-face attack tanks right down the middle uh, pushing objective caps this is a good tank the t20 is also a much lower profile than the shermans so you don't really have to worry about being that big of a target even though it has a sherman turret being that low to the ground you'll immediately notice the difference of not taking shots when you're driving to places because you can use rocks and walls much better for cover you do have a good mobility so you can if you want to be offensively you can use it to kind of push a flank hard and get ready in a position. If you want to play it defensively, it does have good mobility and decent firepower, so you can kind of play it like an M18 in the sense you want to try to get some flanking shots in. It's a good solid tank. It's not an exciting tank, but it's a good solid tank. It does the job. And I give it a buy. I know we keep saying that quite a bit for these American Rank 3s, but they're all pretty good tanks. There's a reason. They're all, they're all very good vehicles for their BR and they do give you options on play styles. So up next we have the M26 T99 and this is going to be a little bit hard to explain but we're going to do our best. So first off to buy the M26 T99 for 5,990 Golden Eagles you have to buy the Quiapi for 9,740 Golden Eagles. So all in you're at about 15,000 Golden Eagles for both vehicles. You can't buy this without first buying that. So once we got that out of the way, it's an M26 Pershing with a 9mm cannon, 
You got your 50 cal on top, and then you have these rockets strapped to the side of his turret. I personally bought this because I was probably drinking way too much one night and just went for it. It's actually kind of a fun vehicle. There's a We did a video with it once, I believe, where we killed an IS-6 with the rockets. Pretty big highlight my worth under career. But would I recommend you buying this thing? No way. Not for this price. And at a 6.3 battle rating, you could probably get some use out of it, but it's not really practical in any way. Plus the fact that, as you mentioned, you do have to get the Calliope first. For the difference between a Tetri version with the very niche rockets, it's not too much worth the price. I was going to say also, because the, uh, the rocket pods are vulnerable to artillery strikes. And so with that, we're going to give this a do not buy. Weighing in at 60 tons, we have the T-28, which is the premium version of the T-95 that is in the tech tree at 7.0. And this guy is 6.3. The only difference you're going to really see is that there's a second set of tracks and kind of some track armor that's been removed. And that actually adds quite a bit to the thing's side armor. Yeah, you do, you lose you lose that spaced armor. So if you get shot in the sides of this guy, you're going you're gonna to die. So this is a very much front towards enemy tank. The Claymore. The Claymore. The Claymore of American tanks is back. You've got a 50 caliber machine on top. You have a whopping 105 millimeter high velocity T5E1 cannon that will pretty much kill anything it can see at this battle rating, I would say. I would say of confidence. That cannon, that cannon will do some nasty things. Now that'll make things think twice before coming around the corner. So this is very much a sit back and I hate to use the term, but sniper. I would call this a sniper tank. If it's an open map, you do want to sit back. If it's a map like Advance of the Rhine where there's some good corridors, you want to sit yourself where you can't get flanked. The front armor will take a hit all day long, but if you get flanked on your sides, you just it's a, it's a casemate that weighs 60 tons. It's, it's not a ballerina. It's not going to turn. You are not going to be able to maneuver something if it's standing around you. But I have had so much fun in, in game with my T28s and T95s. They are absolute blast to play. That being said, though, the T95 is in the normal tech tree, so you don't need to spend 7,480 golden eagles. The pluses for this guy is that it is at a 6.3 battle rating, which makes a huge difference for the cannon and for what you face. So as much as I love this thing, for 7,480 golden eagles, it's a wait for sale. I can't, I can't tell you to buy it right now. If it goes on sale for 50% off or, or any amount like that, I would wholeheartedly tell you to buy it because it is cool and it is something that you will get use out of. It is, yeah. For the price of it compared to the fact that it has weaker side armor and the tech tree T95, it's definitely something you'll wait for sale simply because you do lose a lot of your side armor. Up next we have the Super Hellcat which is the 90mm armed version of the M18 Hellcat. This guy sits at a battle rating of 6.3 and will play pretty much the same style that I explained when talking about the M18 Black Cat. I've owned this tank for two or three years now and to be completely honest I haven't gotten much use out of it. At 6.3 there's a lot of great American tanks to run and this guy kind of falls into the third or fourth or fifth choice when it comes to picking my personal 6.3 American tanks to play. And at a price tag of 7,480 Golden Eagles, I just can't find the value in it to recommend it. It does have the advantage though of having that 90 mil with the ability to use that APCR, which has nearly 300 millimeters of penetration. So it is capable in terms of armament, but you do have to be careful not to get seen or hit. For the price tag, for the price tag of it, it's going to be for me. It's a wait for sale. Up next, we have the M26E1. And the primary difference between this guy and the other ones in the tech tree is that this has a longer, higher velocity cannon barrel, which will give you more punch to your shells, a little more penetration. It's all about that penetration, right, Bear? I want to change conversations. So for 7,480 Golden Eagles at a 6.7 battle rating, what do you think about this tank, Bear? I will get something out of you. Uh, for 7,500 Eagles compared to the tech tree Pershing, with the only main difference being firepower, I'd say this one's a wait for sale. 7,480 Golden Eagles is quite a bit of money. And like I said with the Super Hellcat, at this 6.3, 6.7 battle rating, there's so many good American tanks. I just don't find myself using this tank very often when I could go run some of the bigger, heavier T-Series tanks. It, it's hard to justify the price difference for the only difference being the armament. So with that, my recommendation would be to wait for it to go on sale. 
Up next, we have the T29 at a 7.0 battle rating. The only places you can find this tank for sale right now, I believe, is on the War Thunder Store, PlayStation, and Xbox. It's $40 for a 1,000 Golden Eagles and 7 days of premium. It's one of those vehicles that at BR it is. It is still capable, but it does have some weaknesses, like the fact that if you fire straight through the mantlet, as long as you have 200 millimeters of penetration, you're going to knock out the breach. So it, it is easy to counter if you do have the right vehicle for it. That being said, it does have a gun that is similar to the one on the M26E1 that we just talked about in terms of performance. It's also got 350 caliber machine guns, and that's nothing to sneeze at. For $39.99 with the 7 days of premium and the dual needles with it, for how capable it is, it is a good buy, especially at a, for a rank 4 vehicle. Yeah, for $39.99, I don't think you're going to go wrong purchasing this tank. Up next, we have the M46 Tiger, which is a rank 4 premium at 7.0 battery rating. It's very similar to the M46 that's in the tech tree, except this one has a Tiger face paint on it. It's had its heat armor, the screen mesh material that was placed around the turret removed. And it is a rank 4 instead of rank 5. Other than that, I believe they're both basically the same tanks. Those are the only major differences. And for the price of 6,090 Golden Eagles, and the fact that it's a lower rank, which means it doesn't research as well potentially in top tiers. This is a vehicle that if you really like the M40 Sips, you're going to want to wait for a sale. Otherwise, there's better options in the rank 5 and rank 6 premium lines. I would pick this guy up only if it's 50% off or more. Yeah, that's a fair price. I think 3,000 Golden Eagles is a good price for this vehicle. And up next, we have the little guy that can do everything, the T114. It's amphibious. It fires heat rounds. It looks like a mouse droid. It's got a crew of two, next to no armor. And an autoloader. But it's a lot of fun to sneak up on somebody and uh, shoot them in the back with. Plus, the autoloader actually has a pretty decent reload at about 11 seconds for a three-shot clip. But it is a very fun vehicle. The only issue we have is that it's 8,020 Golden Eagles. And that's, that's a very steep ask for this thing. It is, yeah, 8,000 for a relatively niche engagement style of where you're going to want to be using ambushes and relatively close range due to the fact it's a low velocity uh, weapon. It's, it is a steep ass at 8,000 for how often you will get knocked out by anything with the cannon, airplanes, bombs, rocket splashes. And a lot of people may hate me, but I'm going to compare the thing to the Antos, which is at the same battle rating and uses six recoilless rifles and is kind of the same size, the same profile anyways. They play both kind of similar to me at least. And if you like the Antos, you'll probably like the T114. If you don't like the Antos, you probably won't like the T114. So if you want to mess with that style of gameplay for a bit, use the Antos first before you make the big investment. Yeah. So the Antos will play the same way as the D114. So if you want, you can play the Antos to get a hang of the style and then make up your mind if you do want to spend the 8,000 Eagles to pick up the D114. Uh, but at that price, it's honestly better to wait for a sale just for how limited the engagement style can be. Up next, we have the Israeli Magok 3, which is kind of a mutant tank where they took a couple different American medium tanks Put them together, threw some ERA on, threw some cool smoke grenade launchers, and yeah, here you have it. This thing's pretty deadly. With the ERA package, as well as the very capable 105 with the heat shells, you're not going to find much that you're going to struggle to penetrate. This guy is right now for sale on the War Thunder Store, PlayStation, and Xbox for $49.99, 2,000 Golden Eagles, and 15 days of premium. Oh, one thing. Sorry, one thing I forgot is they removed the commander's capella. So you have a very you have a lower silhouette than the M48A1. Um so 4999, I believe that you're getting a very well balanced tank in terms of armor, armament, maneuverability. It's the whole package. And I would recommend that to you at 7750 bucks. It is a very good all-rounder. So for the base of the pack, it is definitely worth picking up. Up next, we have the T-54E1, which is unique in a couple ways. First off, it's one of the few US tanks that you'll find in game that has an autoloader. And two, it has an oscillating turret. It has a 105mm cannon that can whip out a heat shell every five seconds, which is devastating 
When I first got my hands on this tank, I was amazed by how fast you can smite the other team. It, it just didn't even feel fair. It has, a, it has a really capable main gun with the 380 millimeters of pen you did on the heat shell. So what used to be the scourge of high tier vehicles was like the IS-4M and the T-10. And this thing just goes right through. You can engage multiple Russian heavy tanks. That's what makes this guy special. Firing every five seconds, you can take out two, three, four, five tanks. And it is enjoyable. Armor wise, it it's not reliable armor, but it is rounded enough to design the turret that you can bounce, but don't really expect to hit something and be able to 100% of the time take a hit back. The way you want to play it is if you want to be second line. You want something else ahead of you taking some hits and you pop out and cover the other guy's reload or take advantage of the enemy's reload. So at the moment, this tank is for sale for 8,560 Golden Eagles, which is a pretty big chunk of cash. Now, if you're starting to look at the higher end top tier American tanks, this might be something that you could validate or, or feel, feel like it's worth it to you. It's worth picking up full price um, simply because of how capable it is. It's not going to be something that it's going to be very situational in terms of, for example, like the T28 where you have to, you want to be in a corridor. This thing can kind of go all around and it does have the ability to handle any situation. And the last two tanks we have discussed in the U.S. Tech Tree are the XM1s. There is the XM1 GM that is for sale on PC and PlayStation. And then you have the XM1 Chrysler, which is a Xbox exclusive. Both of them are for sale for $59.99, 2,000 Golden Eagles, and 15 days of premium. You will find it lacking quite a few features of the M1 Abrams. Simple things like smoke grenades, the armor is increased on the M1 Abrams, this is one of those vehicles that it's not a good introductory vehicle if it's your first one. It's one of those vehicles you want to make sure you have something at the BR to run with. In terms of gameplay though, it's a very strong vehicle, especially given the fact it has thermals and it's highly maneuverable, so you can use it to great effect in a flanking and long range roll there. And you don't as you don't really have the armor that the Abrams has. So you are going to want to make sure that you are not trying to tank hits. You want to be very opportunist. If I can give one word of advice to new players, the XM1 package looks very enticing as a way to get to a nearly top tier tank without putting in the time to grind. And I strongly encourage you to go through the process of playing rank 2, rank 3, and rank 4 before thinking about buying something like this because you just don't have the map knowledge, the game knowledge, getting used to the game speed, the last thing you want to do is pick something up and at the way top tier is continuously just get one shot by the people who have been there for a while. Um, you also don't want to be buying something you don't have something to fill a lineup with. So if you're doing this to quick and easy get to top tier, it's not going to be the best way to learn the game. And also you're, going to, you're not going to learn the fundamentals and you might get discouraged easier and faster. At rank 6, it's an unforgiving place, and I don't want to see you get frustrated because you felt like you spent 60 bucks on something that you uh, can't have success with. You'll notice this vehicle used a lot by other TPLF members when we do top tier videos. And the reason being is that rank 5, that, that kind of mid to top range of rank 5 is really hard to grind. And the XM1 really helps you break into rank 6. If you're trying to get that last bit of that US tech tree done, this tank can help you quite a bit, and I would give it a buy for that reason. Up next, we're on to the German tech tree, starting with the Panzer II C Doc, which is a African Corps version of the Panzer II C. That is a light tank with a 20 millimeter cannon and a 7.92 MG34 machine gun in the turret. It's a fun little light tank. It will cost you 250 Golden Eagles, and I believe it's also the reward tank if you choose to play Germany for the first time. It, German ground forces for the first time you play War Thunder. It also has, you know, for a tier 1, it actually has pretty decent frontal armor. That 20mm cannon, unlike the Tetri AA vehicles, the Panzer, Flak Panzer 1 and the Flak Panzer 38, this still has a 100% HVAP belt. So it will penetrate stuff with that HVAP, since it's a full belt of it, you'll be able to just rake through stuff and no problem. So for 250 Golden Eagles, I would say that this is a pretty good buy. It's a really good buy. It won't break the bank, and you could have some DACA fun. And everybody likes DACA fun. Get it, because it's a dock. Oh no, the puns. Up next we have the SD KFC 141, which is the German starter pack. It is for sale on the War Thunder Store, PlayStation, Steam, and Xbox 
for $599. It comes with a HE112 B1U2, 120,000 silver lines, and 7 days of premium. That's a mouthful. I have a blast playing this guy in postscriptum, personally. This has a very similar setup to the Panzer II having a 20mm cannon and a 7.92 machine gun side by side. It's a uh, pretty decent mobile vehicle. It can shoot down airplanes, it can shoot up tanks real good. It's very, it plays very similar to the Panzer IIs, but the advantage is it can carry almost twice the ammunition, so you won't have to worry about running out of ammo. It's really maneuverable, and it has decent enough armor, but the good thing is that its turret has 70 degrees of elevation, so you can use this as an AA. So is that a buy from you? It's an absolute buy. This thing is a blast. Up next, we have a tank that I refuse to try to pronounce on YouTube. This is a three turreted monstrosity with a short 75 and a short 37 mil side by side and three machine guns, one on the coax and then two on small turrets. This thing is big, it's hideous, and if you want to make a fashion statement, this is the tank for you. Costing at 1,750 golden eagles for a rank one, a 1.3. It does have good guns on it with that short 75 and that 37, but you just don't have any armor. You're huge and you have no armor, as Bear said. So with that, I'm going to put this as a... As a don't buy. Yeah, I'm going to go don't buy. Yeah. That's a don't buy, because even on sale, there's better options. So up next, we have what was originally called the Panzer II H in game, but now it's called the PZ SFL 1C, which sports a 50mm Pack 38, and it has a turret on a Panzer II body with a 50 mil gun. It's pretty cool. A little open top action. I'm going to sell you one today. It's like a sports car for the Panzer world. That That's actually accurate. This thing's kind of memeish. And when I say that, you're at 2.3 battle rating. You're really small. You're really quick. You're really short and low to the ground. And you have a 50 millimeter cannon. Plus, you're, you have a 50 millimeter cannon that fires HR. Or HR. HR. HR, you have you yeah. fire human resources from your tank. That's brutal. Uh, yeah, no, you got it fires APCR. I don't know where the H came in, but it does have a very. It has actually a couple APCR shells, but the best one uh, has no problem penning anything it'll see. This thing's a lot of fun, and if you're having a bad day at high tiers, this is one of those things you kind of jump to and just just have fun. You can do the Sturmling and you know slap a Leopard Three sticker on it and bring it into top tier. So this tank is available through what's called a Scout Pack, and that's available on War Thunder and PlayStation currently for fourteen ninety nine. A thousand Golden Eagles and seven days is what it comes with. And I will give this a buy, just because if you're going to round out your War Thunder collection, you got to have one of these. Is it really a War Thunder collection if you don't have one of those? Up next, we have the Panzer 3N, which is like the Panzer 3M, but one more letter. And it has a short 75 versus the long 50 mil. This guy is a heat fleeing monster. Fire 75 millimeter heat shells. It has some fancy side armor they can have attached, or you could put on the new thick tracks if you like. If you like that, that's more your, more your, uh, more to your liking. They also recently added the MG34 on top on that mount, and uh, this guy's this guy's quite a bit of fun. It's a little bit of a learning curve, I would say. Yeah, compared to the 50 millimeter armed uh, Panzer threes, this thing with that short 75, you do have to get used to the fact that you've got a bit more of a drop but you do have the advantage of a three second reload. So you can you can continuously fire out. And the fact that it has the roof machine gun now makes it even better. So for a thousand golden eagles, I would put this as a buy. Absolutely buy if you're looking to uh, grind up some rank two Germany. This is a buy, um, especially because the fact there's a lot of stuff in the tech tree you can run with it. It's also just an extremely capable tank on its own. You do just have to be mindful that you are firing heat. So you have to watch if you're firing your bushes or fences. Up next, we have the Noble Warfare. You have the 15 centimeter PZW42, which fires 10 rockets and then has a reload, so 20 total. We have to reload in between that. And a MG42 mounted on top. It is all packaged onto a half track frame. And yeah, if you want to blow things up. Especially if you, if you hit yourself. You can't fire this at close range. You also have no armor, so anything with a with a 50 caliber or coax. It's just going to chew through you. It can kill tanks in this battle rating, but for 4,800 golden eagles, I would tell you to buy this thing on sale. You won't get... This is... Yeah. This is not something you use every day to grind out your tech tree or to no, even this, play. Yeah. <laughs> this is a sale vehicle and a meme vehicle. It's a good, like, second, third, fourth spawn vehicle in your lineup. Yeah, it's very good at, like, the second or third spot because by that point, a lot of the enemy team are going into 
smaller and lightly armed stuff um, if they've lost their heavy tanks. And this thing actually will murder a lot of stuff with those rockets. You just want to be the ambush predator. Up next, we have the T-34-747R. It is a captured T-34, of course. One of the things that you'll notice, it's very mismatched, missing some parts. The road wheels are different, but it's a great tank, especially for one reason. It's a T-34 that doesn't face German cannons. Which is a huge advantage, considering the German cannons are normally what you want to worry about. At 2,460 Golden Eagles, I would say this thing is a buy because we're about to review a bunch of 4.0 German premiums, and if you buy all of them, you have an amazing lineup. It's, they're like the Infinity Stones. They're all capture vehicles that don't have to face German cannons. Which means you don't have to be as worried about what you face. So 2,460 Golden Eagles, I would say it's a buy right now. It's an absolute buy. It's a super strong vehicle. Up next, we have another tank that I refuse to try to pronounce for you. So we're going to call it the PZBFWGIV. J, because that's a mouthful, even even abbreviated, that's a mouthful. It is a command variant of the Panzer IV. You can see it has the additional side armor package with the mesh and the metal on the side. Recently had the MG34 placed on top of it. And it has the ability to sport the wide tracks instead of the additional armor on the side. I've got bad news though for you about this tank. It's got a hand crank turret. You are going to have to get used to turning the tank to turn the main gun, in a sense. It's like playing a casemate with a turret, because the turret yeah, just doesn't move. And at 1,750 Golden Eagles, I kind of regret buying it myself. And I would tell you to not buy, even if it's on sale. It is a buy for me. Because if you like Panzer IVs, this is a premium one with very good spot where it is in BR. And you, all you got to do is just adjust the play style to make it so that your turret traverse is not going to be bad for you. So keep it mid-range, or if you're going close range, hold corners, hold angles. We have a split decision. It is. We're going to have to, you know, rock, paper, scissors, or just put a split decision. Up next, we have the German captured KV-2 754R. I don't know why I felt like I needed to read that number off, but it's there. Once again, it's a KV-2 that does not have to face German guns. Exactly. And it's fun. Everybody loves KV-2s. Other than that, it's the exact same KV-2 you'll find in the Russian tech tree. For 2,980 Golden Eagles. You match this with that T-34, you got a good time. You're forgetting the best part. What's that? You get a brand spanking new commander stipple on top. You also get the coax machine gun. But the is the important part. Help you see. This is definitely a buy though. Because a lot of the German 4.0s, you don't have to worry about German guns. Which means you can bounce some stuff a bit more. The only downside is, is re semi-recently, the KV-2's main gun had its shells nerfed. So it's not as strong as it once was, but the HE will still do the job and the AP will do the job if you hit the good spots. Up next we have Herman the German Sherman, the M4748, which I was actually surprised to see that it is still for sale on Xbox and PlayStation for $60, 2,000 Golden Eagles, 30 days. It has came out once for beta for PC, and then I believe twice for sale for like Black Friday, and then recently they sold a bunch off. Yeah, so seeing it for sale on Xbox and PlayStation with no limited numbers attached is crazy. So if you want a really cool collector tank that's really good in game, and you got some cash sitting around, give Herman a home. We're, we're going to be following the trend here. Again, don't have to face German guns. It's also 4.0. It can slide in with that KV-2 and that T-34. So if you really want a... I don't want to say pay to win, but a very strong pay to progress. These things will grind out the German tree for you, no problem. Uh, one thing with that bundle is the 30 days of premium and 2,000 Eagles makes it a really good deal um, to help you grind through. Overall, it's a buy, but it is a bit sitsy bots for tier 2. The main reason it's that high is the additional premium time in the Golden Eagles. So overall, it'll help you, even if you're not too interested in the tank itself, but it is a very strong tank. Up next, we have the Captured Churchill, which, guess what battery rating it's at? 4-0. For 1,600 Golden Eagles, you can have your very own German Churchill. This was actually the first tank that Stickboy bought, and he grinded through most of the German tech tree of this tank. We've also taught this tank how to fly in the past. It does a lot of things. It's a good tank. It's a good... Confused. It was British, but now it's German. But it's a good tank. 
this one's actually going to be a wait for sale from me. Oh, why is that? Um, the sits pounder at four zero. I try to sound dramatic while it goes on the radio. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah. The uh, the sits pounder at four zero. It's capable, but it it can be a bit lackluster in an up tier. Well, yeah, but that's but you just drive face four. You just ram things and push them around and laugh at them. Yeah, you do want to make sure your armor is angled though. Again, with the trend of the four O's, you don't face German guns. So it's a bit stronger position than the t British Tetri. We are through the 4.0 captured tanks, and now we're at the Brum Bear at 4.3. 150 millimeter heat flinging, love making casemate. Unlike the Panzer 3N and the Command Panzer 4J, this one, you actually keep your side certs when you put on the wider traps that were recently added, so it does help your maneuverability and you still maintain armor. For 2,980 Golden Eagles, it's it's kind of a very... It's a fun tank destroyer, but it is a little limited in range. That cannon, as you would assume, is hard to use. That's about probably two, 300 meters. You can range it out to about 400 to 600 if you're really good, but it won't be super consistent past that range. I'd say 600 meters plus. You're working some wizardry to drop a shell on something. You're doing some Hail Marys. So for me, I think it's a weight just because of, you know, 3,000 Golden Eagles and it's it's kind of limited. But if you can get it for 25% off, 50% off, I would say buy. For me, it's a buy mainly because in the recent change with the volumetric shells, the front armor does hold. But you do have pretty thin side armor, so you do want to make sure you play this thing on corridors or at range where you can limit the field of fire. The heat shell, as you mentioned, does take a bit to get used to and you can't fire at ranges reliably at ranges beyond 600 so it is limited in its application but it's still a strong vehicle if you've ever found the kv1's firepower a bit lackluster we have a deal for you today the kv1c 756 with the german 75 millimeter cannon the kv1c combines the best of the russian armor in the early tiers with the firepower that the germans take in their early and mid tiers so if you've ever wanted to combine them both and get a very strong vehicle that can do most anything except for be f super fast this is the one for you one couple things to watch for is you don't turn that well you don't have that good of a reverse and your gun depression is not that great so for 60 on our golden eagles would you buy it right now absolutely for for that price it's worth that every penny it's a good all-around tank and i would say buy it for that price up next, we have the Panzer 470A, which it's kind of strange because it's got that front plate that you can see right below the barrel that, that the normal Panzer 470 won't have, which is kind of a weakness. It's got the uh, side armor package. It's got a hell of a gun on it. That 75mm Pack 42 is a monster of a cannon. One thing to keep into consideration, though, if you're thinking about buying it, is it's going to fall from 4.7 to, to a 4.3 battle rating soon. This thing definitely has punch for punch one of the better guns on a tank destroyer in its tier it's one of the vehicles that when the jumbo was at a lower br would be the reliable counter for it uh, the 80 millimeter front plate that's unsloped is the glaring wheat spot on this thing but you can kind of work around that with terrain on maps you also have to watch for your side armor as it's very thin and it's basically flat but as most casemates know, you want to set this thing up at range where you can keep front towards enemy, or you set it up so you're in a corridor. So for 3,850 Golden Eagles, would you buy it? I would personally say this is a wait for sale, simply because there's the Tetri variant. Well, yes, it's a higher BR, has better armor, and this thing for that cost just doesn't offer too much difference. I would say wait if it does... As planned, go to that lower battery rating. It'll be much better. But even then, for 3,850 Golden Eagles, I would say wait. Up next, we have the Porsche Tiger. And I had a very interesting introduction to this tank when I was chasing off a Locust. And it started running in reverse faster than my Locust could go. I will never forget that. Electric transmission. So 5.7 battery rating, 88mm cannon. Very similar to the normal Tiger, except it's got some... It's got some oddities, like the transmission bear talked about. The lower hole is quite a bit different. And then you have that front plate slapped on there. That 102 millimeter front plate slapped on over the uh, driver's viewport. You do have a more heavily armored hull, but you do have the wheat spots on the cheek of the hull, where if you're ever angled, 
it's 80 millimeters, things will go right through. And you do have the big weed spot on top, that's the Commander Coppola. Would you recommend this tank for 6,090 Golden Eagles? As it stands now in the game, with all the vehicles that are available at its tier or higher that are premium, this is a wait for sale. If this was four or five years ago, I would tell you to buy this thing right off the bat. Absolutely. It was a very, still in a good spot. But for the other vehicles that are available in and around its rank and its BR, to me, it's a sale vehicle because it does have a relatively niche thing with that transmission. And you do have a worse turret traverse than the Tetri Tiger 1. I'd agree. It's a definitely a cool vehicle to have in your lineup. I just don't feel like it's worth the price. So it's a wait for me as well. Up next, we have the premium Yag Panther, which is a command variant of the normal Tech Tree one. This was this was the first premium for Germany, because back then there wasn't a whole lot of them available. The Yag Panther, it, it'll play exactly like the Tech Tree Yag Panther, but you do get all the premium bonuses and such on it. So if you do enjoy the Tech Tree Yag Panther and you want something to help you grind through the later tiers, it's not a bad purchase, but it's suffering the same thing that the Porsche Tiger has, where now that there's so many other things available, you really do want to probably put this onto the wait for sale list. Yeah, for the price of 6,090 Golden Eagles, it's not something I feel like you need to run out and buy right now. You can wait. You can wait for a better deal. It's not that it's a bad vehicle. It's just that for what's now available compared to when it was introduced. Up next, we have the Tiger 2H SLA-16, the diesel-powered Tiger. It's got its little MG-34 on top of it. It's got the 88mm cannon. It's a Tiger 2. It's got its whole package. It's just your regular Tiger 2 in terms of the armament and armor aspect, but you do get an enhanced mobility aspect. It's very strong in the sniping role, as well as if you play it correctly in the brawling role. You do just have to be mindful that a lot of the British... 6-7, seven, 7 range vehicles will be able to pen you no problem with the flat turret face but it is a strong vehicle it's available right now on Playstation Xbox and the War Thunder store for thirty nine ninety nine thousand gold eagles and 7 days of premium it would be a buy for me, this is one of the tanks I've bought and I've used a lot for thirty nine ninety nine, compared to the vehicles at its rank and the Golden Eagle cost of them, it's a good buy. You get premium time, you get a thousand Golden Eagles, and you did a capable machine. So up next we have the RU251, and this is a tank that I'd probably say why we feel like the Yag Panther and some of the other guys are kind of weights, is because this guy has completely changed 6.7 Germany. When this thing was introduced, it took over everything in the high tier German premiums. You've got maneuverability and firepower, and you've also got a relatively low profile, so you can use all that to get really good flanks going. Plus you have access to Heat FS, which you can use to great effect on a lot of the things that anything with kinetic rounds might have trouble penetrating. It's currently for sale for 7,480 Golden Eagles, which is quite a bit, and even at that price, if you like the play style of kind of running and shooting scooting, I would say it's a buy for you. If that's your play style, you won't regret this. $40 in Golden Eagles. It's similar price to the Tiger II SLA-16, but the RU251 is a lot stronger in up tiers, as well as a better all-rounder in terms of how to use it on a variety of maps. Up next, we have the German M47G, which is very similar to the American M47. At 7.3, it's not my favorite tank, but it is very capable with TFS round. I'm on the fence on this one. 8,200 Golden Eagles. For one thing though, it does have, um, compared to a lot of other mediums and MBTs at its BR, has a really fast turret traverse at 25 seconds. Or sorry, 25 degrees a second. To me, it's a wait for sale. Because there's not a whole lot of vehicle, there's actually no other premiums at its rank. But for the price difference to get the L44, full cost, I go for the L44 on sale, I like the M47. Because now that they've added the M48A2 and the BMP, you actually can build a lineup with it. So let's bring up our last tank of the day, the L44 you just mentioned. So the A1A1 L44 is arguably the most strong contender for best bang for buck in terms of how effective it is. 
since that L44 is just a complete monstrosity of a gun at 9.0. It has no problem penetrating most anything you'll see, but one thing to watch is you only have about 100 to 120, 130 millimeters of frontal armor, so you do have to watch that you will be able to be penetrated by most anything you'll see, as well as even BMP2 auto cannons can penetrate. So you don't have much armor to rely on. But you're not going to lose in the firepower department. But you will absolutely win. You also have thermal sights, which is one thing we forgot to mention about the SM1, is you do get access to thermals. So this guy's for sale on Steam, War Thunder Store, PlayStation, Xbox for $59.99, 2,000 Golden Eagles, and 15 days of premium. It's absolutely worth the cost if you're at the point where you are ready to start grinding your 6 and 7 uh, BR with full force. You do just have to be mindful that this will have to deal with top tier. So if you're not that comfortable or experienced, it will not... It, this, yeah, that's the main difference between that and the SM1. SM1's 9-3. It'll see 10 threes. This one will only see 10 mats. But that's still some beefy boys. Thank you so much for watching this video. We will be hard at work on Russia and Britain for you next. And then we will do the other nations in a third installment later this week or early next week. Seven years of a game, there's a lot of premiums to cover now. <laughs> Once again, if you enjoyed this video and you're thinking about purchasing something, please check out our affiliate link. It helps out a lot. I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any comments, concerns, you agree or disagree, feel free to leave a YouTube comment. There's no great way to start this off, but welcome to our first video of our premium buy... Couldn't say buying, could I?